What's up, everyone? Welcome to Bench with the Tovar Brothers. Joey here, joined by my brother, Angel. What's up, big dog? Hello. Oh, man. It's almost Super Bowl, baby. Episode 89. 89? On the season. 11 away from the big one, Hundo. But more importantly, uh, what? Friday, Saturday, three days away from Super Bowl 58, Chiefs, 49ers. I'm the worst at that. I'm uh, the worst at, like, remembering... Things that I definitely know. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. Chiefs Niners, three days. Super Bowl 58. It's going to be really good. Usher at halftime. Usher. Reba McIntyre. Post Malone. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I'll rise up. What's your name? Man of me. Uh, uh, lift every voice. Man. Uh, I- Andrea Day. There it is. Yeah. I- I'm Andra. Andra Day. Excuse Andre me. Andra Day. Yeah. Excuse me to all that. We got there. Andre fan, Andre yeah. Day fans out there. Andre Nation. It's pronounced this way. Um, right off the bat here, I want to I want to retire something that I'm just it's not gonna be on the show anymore. Oh wow. Uh-huh. Yep. You didn't run a, this by me. No, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, but I think you're gonna appreciate it. Okay. As a as a man who prides himself as being very fashionable. Okay. Speaking of you, not me. This is the last time I'm wearing the sweater. I realized I wear it a lot on the show. Uh, it's rather old. At this point, maybe vintage. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. Um, but this is the last time I'm wearing it. I'm gonna. I'm stepping up the game, starting uh, in episode 90. Okay. I'm gonna buy some new stuff and wear some new things. Probably some new eagle things, honestly. But this is so the last time. So you went stuff. from the hair, the haircut, to the wardrobe. So you've, yes, you're going through a whole change. You're you're butterflying into a a, a into something beautiful. Yes. Yes. You. I will. Um, in beginnings. honor of that, I will remain the same. Good. <laughs> Just so there's some, you know, very, very good. You gotta have a yin and a yang. I'll stay the same. You go on and do things. I'm I like, mean, we are what uh, 14 days, two weeks on the on the nose from uh, number 30 for you. Big three zero. Big three zero. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, the big three zero. Today I found my first long white hair. I sent a picture to you to you and uh, immediately your wife immediately <laughs> like, what the hell is this shit? <laughs> like, yeah. What is that? It's a that long happens. white hair. That happens, man. Yeah. I I didn't. I saw it and I was like, that's off my head. Yeah, those suckers just grow behind enemy lines too. You don't even know. I didn't. It was know. just cultivating. It was just hanging that, that out was a there. Good three, four inches long. It was yeah. Yikes. Yeah, I threw it. I threw it to the wind, and then I stomped on it. Are you um, of the belief that if you pull it more, like take its place? No, it's like Hydra. Like yeah, you take one, cut cut off one head, two. Will that's take how it goes, place. right? Yeah, that was a pretty good pull by me. Yeah, because I'm not really a. You know, that's not Hydra. Are. That's like classic. But they say in high. That's, yeah, yeah, come yeah. On, give me the yeah, 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 yeah. No, Which, no, no. I'm saying like they they stole it from somebody. So if you, if you remember a different version of it, then it's then it's okay because it's, it's fair not, enough. Yeah. Uh, this episode is for Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Friday. Um, sorry, I did say Friday, didn't I? Happy Friday, happy Saturday. Um, we're recording late on Friday night, uh, February 9th. Most of you are going to hear this on February 10th, uh, but hopefully before. February 11th, which yes, is Super Bowl Sunday. The D-Day. We're going to do today uh, the second uh, part of our Super Bowl preview covering the San Francisco 49ers. We're, we're going to give you guys a lot of flowers because I, I listened to last show. We were a little harsh on them. <laughs> 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 we're a little mean to the Niners. Yeah, a little bit. I, I don't. Listen, this, I, we'll get into it. We'll get okay, into it. Okay, okay. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to cover the Niners. Um, I mean, they're an amazing team. They really are. Looking at their roster, they're, just, they're stocked. Yeah, they're they're fully loaded in yeah. all rel- in all areas of yeah. the field. We're also going to take a look at the uh, NFL awards. They're announced at the NFL Honors Show. NFL Honors Show is not bad. Yeah, I saw Kirk Cousins dance, and that was better than I thought he would be. Uh, Keegan Michael Key did pretty good. Yeah, he was. He's funny. He's always funny. Yeah, he's a classic. Um, and he's he'll push it a little bit, but he knows like who not to push it with. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like he's smart in that way. Yeah, he's not annoying like Trevor Noah. Like he's not right there just. You know, brown nosing, brown nosing, certain six foot four blonde singers. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I digress. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get into that a little bit and then a bunch of news that we'll go through here in a second. Um, if you're watching here on YouTube, thanks so much for joining us. Hi. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I finally gave you that. I never give you that pause to say hi. And we're always like talking over each other. And I feel like I did it there. Podcasting. Yeah, there you go. We're learning, mm-hmm. growing. Mm-hmm. Episode 89. I got the pause. <laughs> we figured it out. Hell yeah. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, thanks so much for joining us. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and like the uh, video, subscribe to the channel, uh, especially here moving past the Super Bowl. We're, we're going to go right into 
uh, draft prep. The pr- draft, draft prep. The draft is, oh, is in yeah. April. My uh, my 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 head coach Sean Payton gave some nuggets today about, mm-hmm. about the draft. Oh yeah, I cannot wait for the draft. Yep, we got Nick Saban as part of the crew now. We for got the, for the draft um, uh, draft coverage. Daniel Hodge or whatever his name is. Merrill Hodge. Merrill Hodge just dogging Caleb Williams. Was that Merrill Hodge? Yeah. Was it? Yeah, it was Merrill Hodge. Yeah, he went pretty hard. He went hard. He's like, he's not special. Yeah, he's not unique. Like, he's damn. definitely not Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes might be the greatest quarterback to ever like, play. Oh, okay, uh, uh, safe that's statement. Easy to say. No one's Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Um. But anyway, yeah. Make sure you're following the the uh, the channel, subscribing to the channel, so that you can uh, keep up with all that. Um. If you're listening on Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, all those platforms. Thanks so much for listening to Bench with the Tovar Brothers, the audio version, and then go ahead and follow those because yeah. sometimes you can't watch and you just need to listen. Yeah, and well. uh, we're on all those platforms. And of course, follow us on Instagram, uh, Twitter, and TikTok. Um, you know, what I realize that for a lot of the same stuff. What's up? The Instagram, I have no idea what's going on. I went on today, and I was like, I don't know any of these people. The comments are crazy. I, I don't. I'm not on that at all. There's, sp- it's a spirited crew on Instagram. Yeah, it really is. I, I, I was going sometimes through, a little mean. I was going to do some old stuff, and I was like, yeah. man, this is. I wish I got in on this. Um, so we put real, we put reels from the show. We put little clips from the show on Instagram, and and some of you have gone at my weight. That's fair. So you have, oh. some of you have gone at our. Color. Oh, you. Dicks, don't do that. <laughs> so, some of you have gone pretty hard at our color, and that's fine, too. <laughs> oh, well, whatever. Uh, and then some of you just straight at our intelligence. Either way, we, we appreciate we'll your... Uh, yeah. Foot of the <laughs> yeah. And that's why I stand for Lift Every Voice. <laughs> no, we appreciate Take all you guys. a long listen to that song. We appreciate the passion of NFL fans, because we're the same way, man. I've said some crazy stuff on yeah, social you, media. Yeah, you're wild. Yeah, so I get yeah, it. I yeah. get it. No worries. Yeah. Uh, thank you for following all those platforms. Uh, make sure you do, and share with a friend. You know? if you, uh, Real friends share good things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I share, like, good music. It's such a safe food. share, too. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like, not hey, like you're... check out these guys. Yeah. It's like, is it... it I, I think it's... It's more safe than sharing a movie suggestion. Yeah, movie can be judged pretty hard. Yeah. Well, or a song. Yeah, yeah. Just hey, just give it a shot. If you don't like it, yeah. whatever. Um, okay, so I saw this, and I wanted to cover it real quick. Uh, it's on this day. I like these. We never do these on the show. but On this day. On this day. That is really interesting. On this day, uh, following NBC's acquisition. This is in 2006. Sorry, okay. I should say that. In 2006, following NBC's acquisition of Sunday Night Football, which that's a big deal. It's a staple. So um, a, a, a football night in America. It was announced that the broadcast team will be the legendary John Madden and Al Michaels. Yeah. ABC. I didn't know this. This is a this is a nice little nugget. Okay. ABC traded Al Michaels to NBC in exchange for the cartoon Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. What the hell is Oswald <laughs> the Lucky Rabbit? <laughs> for uh, for who? For Al Michaels. Wow. <laughs> I mean, you, you have... That is a draft day steal, my friend. Jeez. One of the greatest... Uh... Al Michaels is making more than most NFL players. Yeah. He's also going to be in the Hall of Fame for... Yeah, millions and millions. And he was yeah. traded for Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Where is Oswald the Lucky Rabbit? I have never heard he of this guy. It. Wait, so this was in 06. So I was 12, so I should at least know. I don't, I've never heard of him. Never heard of him. That's wild. Man, they must have thought we have a nugget here. Oswald. Yeah. My boy Ozzy, yeah, tickets to the promised land. Yep, this is a uh, this is a this is an undiscovered in property. that room. They're thinking, I, I got a, I got an up and comer for you. Yeah, you, SpongeBob, take this, Oswald. Yeah, Oswald, <laughs> the lucky rabbit. Or what what what, what that's that was it. name? That was it. That was the it. lucky rabbit. Yep, yep. As what a as you thought. stupid I What a shout out. Wait, who? What, that was who? Uh, ABC traded ABC traded away Al Michaels uh, to NBC. So ABC traded him away. So NBC, okay, you got Football Night in America win. Yeah, you got Al Michaels. Yeah, and then okay, and then they they signed John Madden, Whew. and that was the start of Sunday Night Football. Yeah, uh, um, um, be beautiful. John Madden, Al, Al Michaels, you grew up listening to them. Mm-hmm. Legendary. Let's get the news. We've been following more than usual the halftime show. I think they've been they've been amazing last couple of years. Rihanna was was awesome. Yeah. Um, Dr. Dre and Snoop were 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 cool. The Maroon Five one was a little lackluster. It was, but Eminem, Anderson Pack on the drums that was cool. Yeah, then you had um, yeah. What did you have before that? You know, uh, you had Bruno Mars. Was that Bruno before that? And then you had the uh, Coldplay, Chris Martin. Oh, you Beyonce, had the J Lo, didn't you? J Lo and yeah. and Shakira, a fan favorite. Mm-hmm. Uh, my personal favorite. And then uh, on Sunday we'll have Usher. 
Usher. Uh, today was confirmed, <laughs> though. Usher's going to have a little guest star in one of his songs. <laughs> Do you know who? I heard a lot of rumors. Alicia Keys is confirmed <laughs> to be joining Usher for the Super Bowl halftime show. My boo! It started when we were younger. You were I don't think we could sing that much more. That's my baby! Listen, he's... <laughs> Thanks for. I love the part. I like how you're like. I know we can't sing that much more, but we obviously have to include yeah, this part. I, I can't say my boo without singing. That's my baby. Yeah, it's fair. Like, come on, this um, Usher. TMZ is really just dropping the bombs. This is the most TMZ Super Bowl I've ever. By yeah. The way. Oh yeah. It's, <laughs> yes. Because you have the whole blonde six foot four girl thing, and you have just so much e- extra football thing around. It's in Vegas. Also, yeah, I enjoy seeing every podcast that I listen to or follow. They're all in Vegas gambling. They're all in Vegas having a good time. I they, they should be in Vegas. Look, if it goes well this year, just keep it in Vegas. Yeah, so far no one's been uh no one's had like major that you know, we know legal issues. You know but what I'm I mean, I, I mean, obviously you want it in New York and you know whatever. Yeah. It Vegas is a pretty good spot. Seems like they're doing just fine. Like the city of Vegas probably loves it. It's good for fans to go and visit, take a week in Vegas and yeah. go see the Super Bowl. It just feels, I can't imagine being there, but just watching their content and the different shows that are live from there, it just, you, you feel there's just, there's always energy in that city anyway. Yeah. Um, then you bring the NFL and you, the, the energy the NFL has, and it's just. You bring the biggest game Sunday's, on television. Sunday's going to be popping. Oh, God, I can't freaking wait. Um, Usher is also reportedly, according to TMZ, um, contacted Justin Bieber. The Biebs? The Biebs. Have you seen the Biebs? About joining him in the Super Bowl halftime show. That one's not confirmed, but that would be awesome. Baby. Yep. Yeah, dude. Yeah, he has a couple songs with uh, Usher Raymond. The former uh, mentor of Justin Bieber, right? Yeah. The Biebs is a fan favorite. Global phenom. A little Usher, a little Bieber, a little Alicia Keys. Uh, that sounds like a good... It looks like, like, it looks like we're going to get a little John and Luda. Uh, and we only can... Have 13 minutes to do so, so let's use those wisely. They are really fitting a lot in there. Let's try to get about eight songs or nine songs with Mm -hmm. a bunch of artists into 13 minutes. Yeah, I like it. Uh, Let's talk some real football here. Christian McCaffrey, Nick Bosa, and the 49ers are reportedly very unhappy. They were angry. Very angry. Uh, Probably they they were awakened by a fire alarm in the hotel. Um, Now, this is one of those things that comes out, right? It, It seems like the Chiefs are the home team here. Just because they're more of America's team, and because people have seemingly united under the hatred of for the 49ers. Um, yeah. Yeah. I want to ask you this question: Who's the most likely chief to go or to sneak oh, in there is, and pull the alarm? This is a, this is Wiley Andy Reid, baby. This is the old school tactic. You think Andy's in there? Andy, Andy, wow. and Andy and Kadarius Tony. That's the one I went. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Andy Reid is concocting these plans. Like let's. Turn off the hot water. Let's turn on. Yeah, this is classic football stuff. Yeah, yeah. I but thought, I saw somebody. This is not an accident, and they both sides know it. I thought Kadarius Tony. I thought MVS is uh, maybe the driver. Yeah. Um, and then maybe they are gonna need some muscle. So I'm guessing um, Nick Bolton's unavailable because he has the club hand. Yeah. Um. Oh, Mike Edwards. Pacheco's the muscle. There it is. I, I totally overlooked that. Enforcer. Pacheco. Yeah. What a team. Yeah. MVS, Pacheco, and and yeah. Tony. I'm they're, surprised they're not all in jail right now. They're moving quick. <laughs> And ferociously, and Andy Reid just just sitting in in the unmarked black van. Oh man, yeah. A uh, little injury news that's that's big time for the uh, for the Chiefs though. Jerick McKinnon is likely going to play. He's he's listed as questionable. He's a big time piece for them. Yeah, last postseason he was huge for them. A little juice. Yeah, and he and he's uh, uh, weirdly enough he's their red zone guy because because he could do kind of everything there. Yeah, because they throw it in the red zone. But although in in the uh, in the uh, playoffs, they've run it in the red zone more than they ever had. Yeah. So maybe they keep getting Pacheco. Either way, McKinnon is a nice weapon to have. Unfortunately, Joe Tooney ruled out. The all-pro oh. um, guard ruled out. Uh, it will be Al, Al-, Al-, Al- Gretti. Al- I'm yeah, sure it'll be he's Al- Gretti taking sure a spot. Italian. But Joe Tooney, that, that's a blow. Yeah. Especially since you, you're, you you got to imagine you got, you're, gonna, you're planning on just running the ball 30 times. Yeah. Um, so Joe Tooney out. A uh, big deal, but pretty much everyone else is going to play. You're going to yeah. get two full strength rosters, you know, in this point of the season. And um, yeah, so uh, let's move on to some coaching news. Okay, you ready? Arthur Blank uh, said this. He he poured, he, were, he heard he heard some rumors, mm-hmm. and so he wanted to clear the air. He came out and said that uh, the Falcons never made Bill Belichick an offer. Oh, burn! And that it was not about the power of control. So people, everyone speculated that Bill Belichick is without a job because he wants control. He's always controlled the roster. He's drafted all those things. And uh, Arthur said, "What well, you're not? That rumor's not going to fly about me. I'm going to shoot that down right now." Well, this is kind of like this is just two pros. 
He's saying, I never offered it to him, so he's defending himself. And then yeah. he's saying, but he Bill never asked for it. Maybe he did, yeah. and yeah, you know, this is just business. Yeah. Uh, Crazy that he didn't offer him the job. We, we both broke up with each other yeah. at the same time. It's amicable. Yeah. We went on a date, and we both at the same time said, just friends. Like, just friends. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So I think it's all went. They're just homies. Um, college football is stealing some of these, uh, yeah. some of these coordinators. Yes, they Chip are. Chip Kelly is going to Ohio State. The horseshoe, and he'll be the offensive coordinator for Ohio State. A, a lot of people speculated him going to maybe Seattle, who's mm-hmm. still without an offensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he'll go to Ohio State. Um, That's a shame. Boston College is uh, just going to terrorize their students for four years. Bill O'Brien. Yeah, head I, coach. I tweeted that since I saw it. Those poor kids are about to be yelled and MF'd for the four years in a row. They're really going to get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're really going to yeah, get like, it. Yeah. You suck, dude. Um, this one's cool. You're I, not Brady. I'm an Eagles fan, so obviously Cowboys Eagles thing, but. Mike Zimmer, back in the league. The as Zim. A, as a DC for the Vikings. Number one, he's a freaking football savant. A very overqualified yes. defense coordinator. He's a, like, you upgraded, I think, yeah. from Dan Quinn. Mike Which Zimmer. is crazy. And it's just what he's been through personally. Last time we saw him, he was the head coach of the Vikings. Uh, he Actually, he did some college stuff. I know that, some consulting. Yeah. Um, but now back in the NFL, I think where he belongs. Everyone yeah. everyone loves Mike and Zimmer. And if you know Mike Zimmer's story, he's a what? He's a... Just a man, man, a man's lean, um, the man's man. Yeah, yeah. Yes. He, uh, yeah, I won't go into all of it, but yeah. Shout out to, shout out to Zimmer for getting back to the NFL. The NFL misses you and needs you and welcomes you back. Um, I saw this story. A Packers fan applied for the team's defensive coordinator position. Okay. He, uh, so put, our brother. He put down his fantasy football accolades. Which oh, is nice. Exactly how I would do it. Yeah. Cause you want, you want some like, I just got a tweet here. A little breaking news. I'm not going to push it, though. Uh, Seahawks are hiring former Washington offensive coordinator Ryan Grubb as their offensive coordinator. So, okay. we literally just mentioned that. He stays in, in state? Does that have to move? Yeah. Nice. So, college, they said, NFL said, okay, you're taking one of ours. We'll take one of yours. Yeah. So, college, yeah. come up here. Good for that guy. I have no idea who he is. Ryan Grubb. Oh, Grubb. Future NFL star. Grub, that's a good last name too. Yeah, he's gonna be head coach one day. Grub, yeah, seems like more of a defensive name. Grub, Grub doesn't seem like high fly. It seems get, more like get your grub on stub. Yeah, grubbing. <sighs> we dive way too in that. Yeah. Uh, back to this Packers story here. A fan applied for the defensive quarter position and listed his uh, fantasy football accolades, which is just awesome. Yeah. We were, it, it, yeah. Because that's what we're pretending to do. Yeah. After a few weeks, he amazingly received a handwritten rejection letter a. from Mark Murphy, the president and CEO of the Packers. I don't know if it'd be impressed or like Mark. You got more important things to do, my guy. Nah, this is this is dope. But it's cool, right? This is dope. It's if cool. I was the fan, I'd be like, dude, the president of yeah. the Packers wrote me back personally. Here's my thing: if he takes the time to to write him a letter, was this man in serious consideration? No, <laughs> no. You just wait a minute. Were the Packers about to hire a, a a fantasy football local? You know what this was? You ever see the beginning of pay, uh, Saving Private Ryan when the letter keeps passing up and then up and then up? Remember that? Yeah. That's what happened. That's what you see happening? Some girl saw it. it you like, should see this. Like, like, you, should, you should see this. Yeah. And they went all the way up to whatever his name is. And like, look, there it is. And then he signed it. Had a secretary going out, sent it to him. I, That's like, a, I like to imagine that Mark Murphy was seriously considering hiring this like, He is. <laughs> He's won one championship in How would you years. feel if you were Joe Barry? And they, uh, the guy who took your spot is literally a fan who wrote, who wrote a letter uh, stating his works at Vaughn's. fantasy football. Or works at Wawa. <laughs> just happens to be playing fancy football. Oh, yeah, that'd be pretty funny. Yeah. Um, it came out this uh, this week at some point. I, I think I forgot to announce it last show. Uh, te- former Tennessee Titans head coach Mike Rabel now open and interested in being a DC. Oh, man, that's uh, who's someone, left. Come to Denver. Come, I don't know who's. Do left. Do they have a DC? Yeah, we do. But who, I mean, who doesn't have a DC yet? Is it is it filled up? I might be filled up, but I how mean, is Mike Rabel not in the league? It must he must have a bad rep with coaches. It's funny because you just you've never heard that. Yeah, he must just not have good. Just sounds like he's not very good at like the people to people skills. Is he need. part of that? Is he is he another just New England guy? No, he's good. Who does New England things? I'm saying like oh, like he's too tough. Like he's too Bill Belichick. No, chill out. You're not. Mm-hmm. I I don't think that, but I could see it. That's and, wild I mean, that he's, he's not. Yeah, he's probably not gonna be in the league. Pete and Bill, I get it. You're, they're older. Yeah, the older years, like, I want to be a younger guy. Yeah. Frable's, what, under 50? Wild. Yeah. Um, the NFL is going to Spain. Hey, España. España, our uh, our home country. Hey. We originally hail 
from yeah. Spain, our ancestors. Yeah. Also, um, uh, wait, who? Go, go ahead. What? This, oh, okay. This, this is about the rival Brazil. Okay, about the women. <laughs> we got two heavy hitters. <laughs> Brazil and Spain. NFL really doing these young men a solid. We got we we we, we got to see them go head to head. NFL's who, going hey, to Spain. Who wants it more? In 2025, <laughs> they're gonna play at Real Madrid's uh, oh, Santiago yeah. Sa- Santiago Bernabeu do a, Stadium. Do, do a slow shot of all the fans. Um, the Dolphins and Bears. I didn't know this existed, but have the international marketing marketing rights to Spain. So most likely gonna be one of those teams to host Bears or Dolphins. Okay, the f- fun Bears. teams. Bears be cool, right? Yeah, Dolphins. We've seen them abroad enough. But yeah. They were in Germany. I think they've been in London before. London um, town. Yeah. Um, so now, after having gone to Mexico, London, Germany. Spreading their grubby little hands all over planet Earth. Yep. Down, yep. down to Brazil and then over to, over to Spain. Just knocking out countries. Yeah. Just, yeah. I mean, good for the NFL, and it might just work out because people love the NFL uh, overseas. Are they ever going to go to Africa? Africa. The Wakanda. Uh, probably not. That'd be kind of cool, right? Yeah, there's a lot of Australia would be cool. No, there's a lot of pl- players who are from Africa yeah, who are in I'm the saying. league. Like, and that's why I thought of Australia. Yeah, as well. yeah, that would that would that would be great. I mean, the the reach they can get, and then maybe this is how we expand the league. We get a little bigger. They've been flirting with that for a couple of years now. Never know. Add a couple of teams. You know, um, Chad Chosinko announced he's accepted a job with the Raiders. That's can't. That, that's not real. That's fake, right? No. Yeah. Are you sure? I don't trust him. <laughs> If so, that's a pretty fun have them mic'd up at, you know every Sunday. To, to quote from one of my favorite, our favorite shows, uh, King of Queens, mm-hmm. he just lies so much. He just lies so much. <laughs> Chad Ochocinco, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, if this is real, awesome. Like Ch- Coach Ochocinco is exactly what we need. Oh God, yeah, with I, the Raiders, perfect. I'm gonna shout out another podcast, the Shan Sharp and Chad Ochocinco. Give that a listen. It is freaking hilarious. Is it? Oh my gosh, it's funny. Really, I've never heard it. They're so funny. Really, they're they're hilarious. Yeah, let's do it. But two, uh, well, one's uh, one of the greatest times of all time. The other one's a very good wide wide out. Um, do they interview people? Sometimes, but sometimes they just talk about literally whatever. It's been some popular interviews lately. Yeah. Oh, uh, Shannon had on the Shea, on the club Shay Shay. Yeah, I'll say more international. Oh, Putin. Oh, yeah, Putin, yeah, Putin type things. Put, uh, um, I mean, this is gonna get pulled from <laughs> from YouTube. <laughs> uh, moving on, um, Tucker Carlson. Inter- <laughs> Let's see. What now happens. we're done. <laughs> now we're done for sure. <laughs> uh, Chiefs offensive tackle Donovan Smith. Um, this is interesting to me. The two day, three days before the, the Super Bowl, just I called for a holding. No, no. Donovan oh, Smith man. says uh, tells the New York Post it would be a dream to sign with the Jets. <laughs> He probably knows, like, oh, it's a one year. He was a one year deal. You're three days away from the Super. Just, just wait. Hey, hey Donovan, shut up. Just a shut bit. up. Shut I grew up. up a Jets fan. I'm from New York, so it'd definitely be something I'd appreciate for, for my career. Um, yada yada yada. He's basically from New York. We'd love to play there. I, I think it's kind of weird to say, but I guess that's the league we live in now. People just jump around a little more. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, T Higgins also had some stuff to say about where he might end up. He wants to go to Tennessee. He's the big fish on the market this uh, this offseason. It would be good to go home, apparently from Tennessee or, or for uh, from Nashville, um, and play with a coach that have already been under. So, T. Higgins of Tennessee, as someone who owns him in a in a dynasty league, that that's that's terrifying. Uh, please God, no. There's that's no ter- quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrifying. Please don't go to Tennessee. Uh, there's a place called Houston. They have money. They they it's in, it's in the state of Texas. Pretty good quarterback. Pretty good quarterback. If you want to win a championship, maybe go there. But maybe he wants the money. Did you see that Jalen Johnson thing? You you didn't cover it. I didn't see it. What, what is it? Oh my gosh, hold on. Uh, Phil. Yeah, I'll do another one. Um, I'll find it. Dave Canales took took umption unction. I don't know what that word is, but I know it's something like that. Is it umption? I don't know. Someone someone help me out there. Okay. Um, but he was he was not happy with something that Keegan Michael Key said um, in his Get in his uh, in his rant. Keegan Michael Key said, "My understanding is that um, Taylor Swift, dang it, I didn't want to say her name all week, but it ah. just did, is in Tokyo right now. The only people farther from the Super Bowl are the Carolina Panthers. It's pretty funny. It's a nice joke. Yeah, I mean they know they're bad, and it's, and it's very true. <laughs> yeah, and they know they're bad. It's not like it's some it's some you know whatever. It's like you guys are bad." He put yeah. a, I think it's a coffee cup, and then, like, the scratching face emoji. Um, I don't know. I think it's like, hey, wait till you see what we do. Got my coffee cup here, and all right, I'm taking notes. Hey, you need some motivation? You need some bulletin board uh, material? King of Michael Key. Yeah, they were just dogging us at. Okay. You got it? Yeah. 
Bears cornerback and future free agent, Jalen Johnson. Yeah. On his future. Heart's definitely in Chicago. Mine's definitely on the money. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. That's the most honest thing, though. Yeah. And you could just, yeah, maybe he probably loves the, he probably loves Chicago. And Justin Jefferson said, I want to break the bank. Yeah. He's probably, yeah. Like, look, to probably like, I love where I was drafted. Yeah. I love that, you know, whatever. But I also want to get paid bank. I'm going to get my money. I want to get my money. Those I, two I'm, young guys, like, yeah. Yeah, look, Kirk Cousins in that, in that hometown discount. It's like $2 million. By the way, it's looking more and more like Kirk Cousins is not going back to Minnesota. They're stupid. That's wild. Yeah. They might draft someone. Yeah. Uh, he, I can't even name the amount of teams that would be interested in Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is going to be a surprise quarterback somewhere. Watch. If he's on the Steelers, they're in the playoffs. They've won a oh, playoff game. Yeah. Because I mean, they almost beat the Bills. He's recovered from an Achilles injury. Steelers almost beat the Bills with Mason Rudolph. Right. But he, I mean... He's recovering from, from a, a Give him a two-year. You don't have to yeah. commit long-term. Give him a, a goofy two-year, a one-year guaranteed, and second-year kind of like, you know, whatever. Vikings looking more and more like they're okay with moving on. Okay, let's take a quick break. Um, that's the news. And then when we get back, we're going to jump into these uh, NFL awards that were announced at the NFL Honors Show. Oh, my God. Be right back. Okay, we're back, and we're going to jump into these NFL awards for 2023. And we still got to um, preview the 49ers. So let's move through this. Uh, but it was very, very interesting. Some of this, some of the politics that yep. were obviously at present play. Mm-hmm, at play. Oh. Okay. W- one, I, I was a true surprise, but we'll get to it. We'll yes. get to it. Yeah. Let's start right at the top here with the MVP, Lamar Jackson. We kind of all knew this one. Yeah. Uh, Lamar Jackson, the 11th player in NFL history to win multiple MVPs, joining, look at this list Peyton Manning, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Jim Brown, Brett Favre, Johnny Unitas, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Montana, Steve Young, and Kurt Warner. All those guys, great guys, and then Brett Favre. Yeah, those are that's a a list. I don't want to poop on his parade, but you gotta win you gotta win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Now it's when it's like, okay, you, <sighs> you want to you gotta now it's like you won two M- MVPs, you've mm-hmm. proven that you're that you're talented enough. Now can you win a Super Bowl? But turn, good for him though. Turn I mean, twenty seven, he's now the youngest uh, quarterback to ever win two MVPs. Um had forty nine of the fifty votes. Josh Allen got the other one vote. Hey, so, good for Josh Allen. So a landslide. Yeah, I'm not mad at it. I think Josh Allen probably just got some more votes, to be honest. I'm glad he got a vote, though. I'm glad he, yeah. people recognize, you know. Um, offense player of the year? Let's do that. Christian McCaffrey. Yep. Agree. Um, uh, yes. Yes. Over um, 2,000 scrimmage yards, 21 total touchdowns. I mean, he he's carried his team to the Super Bowl. Yeah. And, through and, through. and the definition of the 49ers is the run game, and he is the crown jewel. Yep. yep. Yes. Uh, and then our first controversy, 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 um, this one, this one ruffled a lot of feathers. Twitter, Twitter was going at this one was a defensive player of the year award. Um, the three front runners were miles Garrett, TJ Watt and Micah Parsons. Um, I think it, it, it's, it should be noted that TJ Watt and Micah Parsons play for very, very popular franchises mm-hmm. with huge loyal fan bases. So that probably added into some of the, uh, mm. The uh, fiery debate. Especially the team in Dallas. Mm-hmm. Um, Miles Garrett wins it. Um, and not everyone's happy about it. I'll take credit real quick. I called that. Being the, being you the, did. Yep. You did. Miles Garrett. Okay, so let, let's look at you have Yeah, this um, um, yes, this okay. side by side here. I'll put it on the screen. One second. Um, they're obviously very close. But if we're just looking at the pure numbers, Miles Garrett has the least impressive impressive numbers of all these guys. Once again, these are the three best freaking pass rushers in the league. We're not, we're not calling anyone trash. But if we're splitting hairs with these guys, is Miles Garrett your choice still? TJ Watts good. Also guys not on this list. Where the hell is Max Crosby? Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, Max Crosby didn't. I I I agree with you. I think Max I take Max Crosby over Michael Parsons and he's right there to me with TJ Watt and yeah. Miles Garrett. Yeah. Um also, this is Definitely turned into a best pass rusher award. Mm-hmm. Like it's been a minute. Yeah. Who who gets the record? Who who has the most this year? Yeah, it's been a minute since a linebacker or a safety won it. Um, that's just the tendency of NFL awards. They yeah. they get kind of pigeonholed into something. Until, the sexy awards, uh, the sexy stats. Yeah, and it's gonna, it's one day going to take some some monster linebacker or safety to break it free. But yeah. for now, this is kind of what it is. Um, honestly, after looking at the numbers, I think TJ Watt maybe been maybe had a case here. Watt's case, Watt, I think him being hurt, I, I, maybe that influenced yeah. it. But yeah. I mean, when Watt's on the field, that te- that Steelers team's elite. He's elite. And, I mean, nineteen sacks and he missed a couple games. I mean, he could have easily booked twenty again. Here are the stats that he had. I won't. Yeah, here's a fast way to do it. 
Um, these are the categories that he had better numbers than Micah Parsons and Miles Garrett. Tackles, sacks, pressures, QB hits, tackles for loss, forced fumbles, forced recoveries, interceptions, pass deflections, and then just to throw it on there, a defensive touchdown. That seems important. Those are huge. Yeah. <laughs> like, those yeah. are phenomenal. And then did you see Parsons today? What he said? Yeah. Dogging. Going to Miles Garrett a little bit. No, and going to, no, get what? Going to what? Oh, yeah, yeah, at what? Yeah, yeah, at what? Um, Micah. Shut up. You're not as good as TJ Watt. Nope. I hate to break it to you and the Dallas fans watching and listening. Miles Garrett and TJ Watt are a different tier than yes. Micah Parsons. Yeah. And Max Crosby is better than Micah Parsons. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Um, Deron Bland, uh, thank God, did was not really taken seriously. He barely got any votes. And, yeah. Um, I'm not going to. I don't I upset you too much. I know that one pissed you off. Uh, but, all pro, yeah, all yeah. pro, Deron Bland. Fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Michael Parsons, chill, bro. You were definitely third place in this in this conversation. Uh, I think TJ Watt got robbed. Miles Garrett, though, a, amazing player, and this Browns team cleaned up. Yeah, they cleaned <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's move on here to the offensive rookie of the year, our boy CJ Stroud. Chester Johnson Stroud brings home the offensive rookie of the year, the second straight year that a Ohio State Buckeye wins the award. So maybe Chip Kelly gives us our next one next mm-hmm. year. Probably because his name's Marvin Jones Jr. Marvin Harrison Jr. Well, he's in the draft. So that's what I'm saying. He might be the rookie of the year next year. He might get three straight Ohio State Buckeye. Hell yeah. That's crazy. Um, yeah, see Stroud, best rookie I've seen in a long, long time. Okay, here's I think okay. He's my he's my guy too. But he got forty eight of the fifty votes. Who could have cool on the guy yeah. too? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's I, I love. We we've been Come over on. the moon about Stroud, but I mean, not two for Puka Nakua. Yeah, whether or not he looks like what you think, you know, a great wide receiver looks like, or like talks like it, yeah. or he broke everyone's records. He, he broke ball, OBJ he, records. He he, come on. He balled out in the playoffs. Yeah, he. I mean, that's I don't, it, it's. I think the right guy won it, but I think the landslide is kind of a. Yeah. Well, you know, but it's what you said when I first sent you that. You literally said, "What well, quarterback?" Yeah, yeah it's just, just gonna people yeah. like the quarterback and CJ Stroud. We're not taking anything from him. He should have won, uh, but I think it should have been a lot closer than this. Yeah, it was pretty ridiculous. Uh, defensive rookie of the year, Will Anderson. So second straight year that the same team has the offensive and defensive rookies of the year. Texans uh, slam dunk offseason. Yep. Uh, uh, head coach, nar- yeah, head coach, quarterback, well. pass rusher. God, narrowly won it over Jalen Carter. Okay, Jalen so Carter. I'm okay with it. They're both going to be stuck. Carter Wolves. Carter's very good, too. Yeah. Um, I have a feeling we're going to talk about this for a second here. Comeback player of the year. Hmm. Joe Flacco. Came back from playing last year. Came black. Came, no, he did not come black. No. Uh, came back from just being bad at football. Yeah. Um, good for then, you, Joe. Then he played six games of okay football. I'm glad you overcame this huge feat. Comeback player of the year. You played last <clears throat> year with no injuries. Yeah, he was just bad. He was released, I think. The Eagles released him, and then the Jets played him. And he sucked there too. And now he comes back. He didn't even really light it up. He would just what they had quarterback before he got there was just so bad that he Yeah, he threw multiple picks in the first four <laughs> games. Yeah. Like he did not come in like five touchdowns and this is a joke. Like this is this is terrible. I go on and on again. Brees Hall got absolutely <sighs> robbed. Okay, let me read you something here. Flacco got 151 votes. Right behind him was DeMar Hamlin, 140. Brees Hall got three votes. That's three. This is a joke category. What Flacco. You, what? Uh, look, I'm happy Flacco got his award. That's great. I'm happy for you, dude. But um, you don't deserve that. No. Shit. That's. Yeah. Brees Hall is broke and, his. And another oh name that God, I didn't I that I didn't really consider before now, but really should be, is Brock Purdy. The Purd, yeah. He, 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 had, a, he had elbow surgery in the offseason, came back, has his team in the what Super is, Bowl. What is the qualification for this award? I don't know. Someone suggested that the NFL just needs to come up with a comeback player of the year award and a most improved player award. Yeah. Because right now it just seems like a most improved player. And even that doesn't make sense. Like Geno Smith, I guess that's most improved. Yeah. Um, but as far as like a comeback player of the year, like what did Flacco come back from? Yeah. Just sucking. Like I, that yeah. doesn't make any Whoa, sense. Pause. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Damar Hammond actually f- finished with more first place votes. But because of the new scoring system, uh, Flacco had more overall votes and therefore won the award. Sorry, Damar. Just seems weird. It, yeah. Um, after this season, I wonder... If he'll play again. He said he wants to. Good for him. I'll Maybe he'll win it again next year if I'll, he plays 12 games. I want to play too. 
If he plays 12 games next year, maybe they'll be like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He only played six last year. There's a comeback. Give him, give him the award. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Because there's no qualification uh, or criteria that needs to be met in this award anymore. Uh, yeah. So he wins it for the Browns. Uh, Browns continue their rampage. Coach of the year, Kevin Stefanski. There were so many candidates and so many good head coaches. Lost by one first place vote. Um, that's D'Amico Ryans. So D'Amico Ryans right on his tail. Look, we love both those guys. I'll flip a coin, yep. and I'll take which one that you that, yep. that you don't want. You yep. know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, they're both studs. We love both those guys. I love that it was that close. Yeah. Because that's what it should have been. Uh, Stefanski did an amazing job with all those injuries. You lost your quarterback, both yeah. tackles, yeah. your star running back, your D, uh, interior lineman. Yeah. A couple cornerbacks, a couple safeties. Come yeah. on, man. I mean, he did have the comeback player of the year, so I guess yeah, okay, fine. Okay, that gotcha, boosted gotcha, his. Gotcha. <laughs> What the hell? Uh, Kevin Stefanski. You see them um, mispron- or, or mis- uh, not mispronounced, just straight up mess up his name. Yeah. I'm Steven Stefanski. Some Hollywood actor has no idea what football is. The guy from This Is Us. Yeah. I hate that show. That was, I just know it's really sad. My, my wife watched it. It's just drama. Hours of depression. Yeah. Uh, never mind. Moving on. Um, so, yeah, he wins his second Coach of the Year award. Kevin Stefanski. Good for him. Yeah. Racking up the awards. Now there's only one more. And you know what it is. Uh, another Brown here, Jim Schwartz, assistant coach of the year. In a, in a year where the assistant coaches were ballers. Bobby Slowick. Some big names. Bobby Slowick. Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson. Uh, Mike McDonald. Um, guys who either became a coach or could have easily become a coach. Yeah. Just basically said no. Yeah. We'll wait. And for this guy, Jim Schwartz, to good for him. Yeah, yeah. We, he, I, I, my image of him is him chasing down Jim Harbaugh after that high five or the handshake or uh, ordeal. Yes, yes. But um, <laughs> no, he he created that that he fight, that that defense was always talented. Yeah. He made him in, in, into dogs this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great job by uh, by Mr. Jim Schwartz there. So they have the um, coach of the year, the the assistant coach of the year, um, the comeback player of the year, um, the defensive player of the year, <clears throat> and their first round checkout. Now, it's because they don't have a quarterback. Yep. The biggest problem here is, I mean, what stood out to me is that the Ravens had the MVP. They had um, both their coordinators in the running for the assistant coach awards. Uh, award. Um, they're also first on checkouts. Yep. Can you just run it back with the Ravens? I know oh. this is way off topic, but this yeah. is what I thought of when I saw Lamar oh. Jackson up here. I yeah, said, yeah. Oh. Yeah, run it back. Right, yeah, I think this is... Yeah. You're, in, you're in an era where you still, yeah. Well, M- uh, McDonald left though. That's what I'm saying. He's gonna, he's gonna plug and play. I don't know. These it's are gonna, questions. It's gonna be really interesting if if Lamar Jackson is to win it next year. Like, we got to have some serious conversations here. Yeah, the Mike, Mike, Mike McDonald. McDonald? Yeah, him leaving is tough, but the base, the core of this team is still there. Mm-hmm. And Lamar Jackson is entering that Peyton Manning stage, Josh Allen's, it, you know, pre Peyton Manning's championship, where it's yeah. like, you're look, obviously you're great, but can you win the whole thing? Uh, yeah, uh, Lamar Jackson mm-hmm. and the Ravens have a lot of questions. Uh, Walter Peyton Man of the Year Award goes to Cameron Hayward. So good for you, Cameron Hayward. Yeah. All those guys. It was cool to see their stories and what they do for, commu- for the community. Um, yeah, I think it's important. Sorry, go ahead. There's no losers in, in this award. Exactly, they're all winners. They all give um, back to the community in huge ways. And I just I love this award because we always like. What usually catches the headlines is, you know, so-and-so beat up his wife, so-and-so pulled a gun on someone, so-and-so yeah. DUI, yeah. whatever. Um, a lot, of, Most of these guys are just good dudes. Yeah, this is a good, this is a good guy award. Yeah, so love it. Yeah. Uh, Hall of Fame. Oh. Here's your Hall of Fame class. Ready? Here we go. Julius Peppers. Yeah. Oh, my God. Just a cool-looking defensive end. And a very talented guy. He, he, God, he was such a good he was a stud. I know this is one of your favorites, Patrick Willis. Yeah. Oh my God. Just linebacker. Go fifty two there, just lighting people up in Candlestick Park. If you have like a linebacker get together for the for Forty ers that's that's a party. Yeah, and he's he, yeah he's and he's the bell of the ball. He was so good. Yep. Uh, Andre Johnson, first Texan ever in the Hall of Fame. Yep. Deservedly so. Yeah. Also, you beat the crap out of uh, Corlin Finnegan. Corlin Finnegan. We are still thanking you I for, love that, that. for that day and for that clip. It lives that. on in our and on YouTube and in our hearts oh. forever. Uh, Devin Hester. Yes, finally. Yes. I've been wanting Devin Hester in there. You have. Yeah, you've been pounding the table for that. Yeah. Um, I mean, NFL, just legend, Madden legend. Madden legend, yeah. absolute dog. Yeah. Yeah. Devin Hester, uh, Dwight Freeney, the spin move. The, That's what I think of. Yeah. The spin move also has kind of the body of a huge 13-year-old. Yeah, kind of awkward right. looking, but mm-hmm. he's very good at football. Yep. 
uh, Steve McMichael. My boy Steve. <laughs> Steve was so good. Oh, God, yeah. dude. The hey. highlights of that guy are indescribable. Yeah, he wasn't. I literally can't describe him to you right now. Randy. <laughs> I literally can't. My I, mind can't. Do I it. can't even use get the words out to describe what's his name, Steve McMichael. Steve McMichael's career. Oh God, Steve. Oh, God, thank you, Steve. He really went with that. We salute uh, you. Randy Gradishar is the last one. Oh, here. Randy. You thought Steve was good. <laughs> you thought Steve was good. Get a little of this, dude. Randy will knock. Randy, off. Randy, Randy, show him what's up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Joey, tell him about Randy. Yeah, Randy was. <laughs> I tell you what, Randy was a dog. Yeah. They talked about Randy. In the locker room, that's just being one of those yeah. guys you didn't mess hey, with. Hey, dude, don't mess with Randy today. Yeah. He's yeah. on one today. Yeah, he's on one today. That's oh. a future Hall of Famer. Yeah. Hey, Randy, take it easy, Randy. Uh, Gratis Char also. It's just a game, Randy. Yeah. <laughs> it's all for fun. Yeah. Randy. They used to call him Too Far Randy. Yeah. Hey, too Far Randy. Too Far Randy. Yo, yo, ease up, Randy. Ooh. Can't stab that guy, Randy. Ooh, easy. Ooh. Okay, we, okay. <laughs> okay. We obviously don't know who those guys are. Um, Hall of Fame snubs. There's one. Please say it first. Antonio Gates. Yep, that is one of the best times of all time. Listen, we know Randy and Steve were just, just legends of the gridiron. Yeah, just, Antonio Gates need to be a first ballot Hall of Fame. Yeah, the fact that he's not first ballot, that, that's a miss. That's okay. a snub, and that's unforgivable. Um, other names here. Tell me if anything sticks out. Reggie Wayne, Ronnie Harrison, Darren Woodson, Tory Holt, Fred Taylor, Eric Allen, Jared Allen. Um, Tory Holt. Yeah, phenomenal numbers. Reggie Wayne. I have to take a look at. I'm not too. F- I'm not sure if he even beat Marvin Harrison's he, numbers. He thought he belonged in. He tweeted immediately after. Yeah. In but surprise. He's like, yeah. I'm sure he has the numbers to get in, but on a first ballot, I'm not sure. I feel like that's a rough one to be snubbed because everyone, like your whole family's watching. Like, because it's a lifetime achievement award. Didn't John Madden describe it the best way? I, I still think of it. Can you write the story of the NFL without this guy? Yeah. That's what I think. I'm like, I think we could write the story without Reggie. Uh, a good part of it, at least. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with Reggie Wayne. Jared Allen was my guy. Antonio Gates, my yeah, but yeah, yeah. Jared Allen, Jared Allen's just like, yeah. I mean, for a while there, he was the best guy in the league. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He was um, truly dominant. Yeah, he, to me, he's the first coming of Max Crosby. Not because he's white. <laughs> no, not just because he's white. They they have that just that. <laughs> we'll rise up. That hustle. That uh, that uh, what's it called? What uh, that sneaky athleticism? Oh yeah, IQ baby, <laughs> sneaky fast football IQ. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no. Congratulations to the uh, to the Hall of Fame class. You guys are dogs. Some names going to next year. Just a stacked class. And how old are we that we've seen all these players? Yeah. Uh, Tory Holt, Reggie Wayne, and Jared Allen are in trouble next year because I, I, th- I think most of these guys are getting in. Eli Manning, yes. Luke Keekley. Oh. yes. Adam Vinatieri, yes. First ballot. Terrell Suggs, T T Sizzle, probably. Yeah. Uh, Marshawn Lynch, yeah. You know they're putting Marshawn in. Whether he deserves it or not. I'm not sure if he deserves this. Yeah, he does. One. You don't think so? Uh, he was good for about six years. If uh, they would have given him the ball at the one-yard line, he would have. Maybe it would have different. Uh, Earl Thomas. Yep. Joe Staley. Demarius Thomas. He'll get in. DT. I'm like, <laughs> I got all tingling That fired you up. That yeah, fired yeah, you yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. uh, Demarius Thomas to get in this. I'm going to start cussing. Vernon Davis, Akeem Tlaib, Darren Sproles, Cameron Wake. I mean, just a stacked class next yep. year. Um, so... We'll see what happens there. Let's yep. take a quick break once again, and then we're going to get into our final segment here, previewing the San Francisco 49ers, part two of our Super Bowl preview. Be right back. Okay, we are back with our part two of our Super Bowl preview, focusing on the San Francisco 49ers. We covered the Chiefs in the last episode. Make sure you go and watch that uh, to get our full preview. But now it's the Niners. Niners. Uh, they are stacked. They're very, very good. See, look. On paper, <laughs> I don't can't remember a team that's has this much talent on every level, They're every so position good. group across the board. Also, what stood out to me is how many good choices they have made personnel wise. Like yeah. I've been someone definitely we both were, especially in the beginning of the year, who killed them for the Trey Lance trade. Like that was just Dumb. bad on so many levels. Yeah. But these signings, these free agency moves, these trades, they just hit over and over again. Yeah. Just killing it. Let's start on the uh off inside the ball, kind of how we built the team. Okay. Let's go there. Okay. Um, anything stood out to you before? Yeah. This is a team that's um, – most teams don't do what they did. They admitted they were wrong, and they moved on to a seventh-round quarterback, and now then they're in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Most teams would have said, nope, Trey Lance, Trey Lance is our guy. Yeah. Period. I don't care if he's hurt. When he comes back, it's, it's his team. Right. They just said, nope, the best player will play, and even, even if he's Mr. Irrelevant. And that is how most teams handle it. 
Yeah. Like, no, this is our guy. Yeah. Um, if you saw um, uh, Shanahan's drunken rant, that's what it was about. Yeah. It was about seeing Purdy in practice and just seeing how he just always played the same. Yeah. And how they, that, that was their guy, and that's what he felt. Yeah. And uh, the only rumor that I've heard where they are possibly going to replace him is if they lured uh, Tom Brady there. Yeah, which would have at that point. Understandable. Yes, sure. <laughs> Mr. Brady, please enter the room. Uh, Brock, excuse me. Um, okay, but here's, here's, here's how I feel about Brock Purdy. Okay. Is he the MVP? No. Should he have been a candidate this year? No. Is he really good at running this offense? Yes. Is that unique? Yes. Like, yeah. just because we call him a game manager does not mean what he's doing is not impressive. Yeah. Like, because he, he's been, I think I would be, it'd be fair to say he's been more than a game manager in the playoffs. Like, we've seen him orchestrate a game winning drive. He had some moments where he threw some. Do some plays. We're like, Shh, that's pretty good throw. Yeah, yeah, pretty big, pretty big, big moments. He's made some plays with his legs. Like he's yeah. done some things where it's like, okay, those are those are winning plays. Those mm-hmm. are those are above and beyond plays. Those are not game manager plays. So props to him. But for the for the large part here, I think um, I'd be lying if I didn't say that he was propped up by one of the best uh, play caller and play designers in the NFL, and Kyle Shanahan, and one of the best um, supporting cast there is out there. Best left tackle, best running back. Yeah. That, that helps you out. And then Debo and yeah. Brandon Ayuk also Kittle. help you out. Kittle. Uh, yeah. This offensive line, Trent Trent Williams, who yeah. they got for two-thirds, by the way. Yeah. That's, uh, what a, a steal. Deal. Um, so we love Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy can definitely win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Brock Purdy can definitely beat Patrick Mahomes on Sunday. Yeah. 100%. Um, is that kind of how you feel, too, or, like, anything different? No, I feel that way. I feel he's uh, – I showed you – I told you what comp was for him already. It's, I think he's just the Joe Flacco. Okay. That's – not just Joe Flacco. That's disrespectful. He's Joe Flacco. Good, not great, but not prime bad. Prime Joe Flacco. Yeah, prime Joe Flacco is better than you think. Brock Purdy is better than people think. Prime Joe Flacco won a Super Bowl. Brock with, Purdy with might, a very good defense. Brock Purdy might, it's very similar. I'm yeah. telling you, it's very similar. I'm not quite there, but I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting there. Okay. Uh, Christian McCaffrey. Best uh, running back in the he, league. He, Hall of Famer. Here's where I am. He's the most important player on the field Sunday. Yeah. He's the most important player on he the field. He goes down. Game. Watch how the offense Acts different. He goes off. Watch the Niners win a Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. He's the biggest part of the offense for sure. You're right. He's the center. He's the focal point. The center point. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. He if if he goes off, they're winning. They're they're winning self. They're himself a Lombardi Trophy. Behind him, Elijah Mitchell, who's also very good. We'll yeah. see him mixed in at receiver. Of course, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and Jawan Jennings um, kind of lead that cast. They're all so different. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Debo is the, is the playmaker. Yeah. It's tone tone setter, energy giver. I'm glad you brought that up because he's a little bit um, more than the box score even. Sometimes he'll have four catches for 58 yards. Yeah. But, like, how he got those yards, you know, who he ran yeah. over. Sometimes they're in a lull and they just give him the ball. And he just has a juice. Just, and he just, yeah, and he, you know, he his career has proven that he's been injury prone or whatever because he plays like that. Yeah. But they rely on him to play like that. And to his credit, two weeks ago, cracked that shoulder again and came back the next week and looked every bit as Debo Samuel as he's all always been. And now gets a week off because mm-hmm. of the Pro Bowl, and now gets a full, you know, full bye week. He's probably full. And then Ayuk is the most underrated wideout in the league. He's so good. 1,300 yards, same type of catches, seven touchdowns, seventh in receiving in the league. Yeah. Um, I, I, he's, he's one of my favorite wideouts. That's not. That's not like like a superstar. He's fantastic. He separates better than you think. Yeah. He's faster than you think. Yeah. He is so strong at the point of catch. To yeah. me, he's very AJ Brown, like as far as snagging the ball out of the air, no matter where the DB is on his yeah. body or very good. whatever. He's just so strong at the ball. And then Jawan Jennings just has a way of making big catches for this team. He's that gritty guy that, he, that every team needs. Yeah, like he, just a glue guy. He knows his role. He steps yeah. up from on occasion. In big games, he's been there before. He's been with this team for a couple times. Mike yeah. uh, Kyle Shanahan, I keep calling him Mike Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan trusts him, obviously. Brock Purdy trusts him. And he, he, you know, he oftentimes makes some of a factor in this game. And then, of course, you have George Kittle, who best career, in, best career, if best season in a couple of years. If for it wasn't him. for Travis Kelsey, he'd be named as like, oh, this is yeah. the best Titan that we've, that we've ever seen. Good in the run game. Yeah. Good, obviously good pass catcher. Good yak guy. Kind of well, everything you want as a tight end. I want to start there. What he does in the run game yeah. as a blocker is... There's a reason why he's on the field all the time. That might be the best thing about it, and he's an incredible receiver, but yeah. the kind of, we all saw the clip of him just putting Aiden Hutchinson on his ass. Yeah, yeah. Like a full-grown defensive end. Yeah. Just pancaking him and laughing about Like, he's just... 
What he does there and this their identity running the ball is so important. And then, yeah, put him in the passing game. You don't want to tackle the guy. He's basically just a bigger Debo Samuel. Yeah, he's huge. Um, and also also very, like, like energy-giving. We talked about the energy of the Chiefs. The energy of this Niners team is very different. Yeah. Um, but still, like, there's a lot of it. Like, it's a very – it's a, it's a definitely a more flamboyant, a more, um, like, a bully yeah. type of energy. Yeah, that's what – Kosh Hanna wants. He wants the physical run game with the play action and the yak. And this is, yeah. he has assembled the right cast of characters to run his offense the way he wants it. Right. Um, Kyle Juszczyk, obviously they'll mix him in. They love him. And then we'll see a ton about his wife and whatever she made that day. God, why are you hating on me? <laughs> no, I'm saying, uh, that's, that's kind of, honestly, most people probably didn't know who Kyle Juszczyk was until they that's saw a, his he, wife. He's, a, he's like an all-pro fullback. Sorry, I don't mean guys like me and you. I mean people who are maybe new to the NFL. They didn't know the fullback. Like Taylor Swift. Them two. Oh, is um, there a name? Ah. Either way, Kyle, and she's made it on the show twice now on this show. We made it all the way to Friday. Uh, Kyle Juszczyk, though, he will be mixing in the passing game. Like, they run they run him straight up routes from, like, a wide receiver stance. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. Yeah, he, yeah. But he's, I mean, he makes big cat, catches. He'll, um, they'll do that fullback dive with him. They're, like, the only team in the league that still runs that. Uh, Sean Payne ran it. Not very Did effectively, he? but he yeah. ran it. Yeah. I'm not but, sure. That. But Kyle Shanahan designs. He's not really a fullback. He's not really a running back. He's not really a tight end. He's just a player. Just, um, they've made him into just a jack-of-all-trades guy. He does so much for this team. As good as those weapons that we just went through, each and every one of them, this game is going to come down to if this offensive line can protect Brock Purdy. Because yeah. I think Brock Purdy is very different when he has someone in his face, when to, he's rushed. To be fair, most quarterbacks. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I think he's... Not as careful as maybe people think, uh, pe- like uh, people give him credit for. Like I think he's missed a lot of, he's dodged a lot of bullets this off season. Like he should have thrown uh, off season this uh, postseason. He should have thrown a lot of more, a lot more interceptions than he has. And if they can't find a way to pick up these uh, Steve Spagnuolo blitzes, yeah, um, they're gonna. I don't care who is running routes or getting handed the ball. Um, this Chiefs defense is no joke. Yeah, it's it's. It's fun to see. It's gonna be fun to see what the <clears throat> tactics are to kind of kind of subdue the Chiefs, the Chiefs front, where they put two two tight ends on the field. Yuschek be used a lot. I'm curious to see Yuschek's use. If yeah. they just go bully ball, like, hey, we're gonna go right towards the the heart of your team, Chris Jones, Bolton, right there in the middle. I, that's what I would do. I would play bully ball. I, I'd play bully ball immediately. Debo in the backfield, CMC, heavy dose of that. Let the play action work. Come yeah. to the second quarter, third quarter, but just. Set the tone early. You have the guys. Yeah, you have the guys to set the to win to win the line. You just gotta set the tone. I don't think that's a bad idea. I think just yeah, send the tone with guys who have been there before. Um, steady dose of McCaffrey, Debo, yeah. Kittle. Take a dose from Mike Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan's dad. Yep. That Super Bowl with with John Elway, Charles Davis ran for three touchdowns. Early shots at you, maybe. Do the same thing with Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. Run his ass. Not a bad idea. Run it. As far as where these guys came from on the offense, obviously the homegrown talent is. Uh, Brock Purdy, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, uh, George Kittle. They they draft these guys. Mr. Not Kyle, so relevant. Kyle oh, Mr. Uh, um, not so irrelevant. Not so irrelevant. There mm-hmm. you go. There. I don't know why. Um, yeah. And then two huge trades that just, I mean, changed this team. Yep. Like, not just this offense. Change this team. Two. Uh, not Chase Young. In case you're thinking, in case you're it's not Chase Young. Yeah. God, it's not Chase Young. We're going to go in on Jace, Chase Young for a second. No, year. yeah. Yes, we, yes, we will. Um, Trent Williams. Two third round picks. They yep. just steal. He's the best left tackle in the NFL for Hall the last. Famer. Yeah, it's and just a another one of those guys who sets a tone. Yep, big just physical a, a, to move. Yeah, a real tough guy. Yeah, <laughs> like a real I'll fight you guy. Yeah, um, and then of course Christian McCaffrey, like just who they didn't give a first round pick for. Yeah, it's it's crazy. They got these guys and go, think about didn't not give a single first. first round pick. John Lynch over there cooking. That's what I'm saying. Um, Shout out to Carolina and to Washington for just giving these guys away for like nothing. Yeah, when, when I looked at those trades, I literally just decided at that moment I'm not going to give them more crap about Trey Lance. Yeah, because you're going to win some, you're going to lose some, and yeah. he's definitely won some. And they've won a lot. Those yeah. two trades, I mean, just just setting it off. Um, free agency. I don't know if there's anyone worth no, noting here. They've lost guys to free agency and just keep replacing them. Yeah, namely who? last season, uh, the big the big Bronco signing. I'm blanking out his name now. I can't remember either. Right tackle. Yeah. Oh, yeah, McGlinchey. Yeah, yeah. McGlinchey just replaced him, right. drafted a guy. They're very good at that. Um, Colton McKivitz. Yeah. Now they, because of all these big contracts, they need to find, you know, little, you know, yeah. gems in the draft, and they're doing a good job with that. Let's look at this defense. Um, 
Now, I saw a tweet, and I, I, I'm going to tend to agree with it. Let's and start from the ground up. It's going to make everyone upset if okay. you're a Niners fan, but I think I believe it. I think the name brand uh, value, as far as defensive go, defenses go in this game, goes with the Niners. I think they're probably not as good as people think they are because the name brand that the 49ers defense is. I think the Chiefs defense is better. Yeah. They're playing better. Yeah. They should. Okay. Yeah. 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 No. No. I'm saying, I'm saying like it, 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 it's a real testament to the Chiefs for playing better than this yeah. team with all these stars. Not saying at all this defense isn't fantastic. No. Like this is a this is a great defense. Um, but there's some holes, especially recently. Um, uh, but let's just go down. Let's go down this roster here. Let's start the defensive line. Yeah. Okay. Ground up. Uh, now, you want me to get into it? You want to? You want to get into it? Let's just get into Chase Young real quick. Okay. <laughs> He's the first well, guy on my list. Yeah, too. they they traded a third round pick for him. It's a comp pick, third round. So and okay. so and a th- basically like a fourth round pick. Okay. Uh, two and a half sacks since being traded to San Francisco. Bench yeah. for laziness. There's film of him being freaking lazy. Why? It, look, In the playoffs. If this can't propel you to be a better worker than being on the Niners in the Super Bowl, then this guy just give up on him. Yeah, you're on a team with a ton of leadership, a ton of heart. You're playing across from your boy, Nick Bosa. I mean, you got Fred Warner and, Dr- and Drake Greenlaw behind you. And you can't get up for a game, like you, you can't chase down a tackle. You can't, and your name is Chase, like bro. And, See, I did that. Oh, okay, gotcha. No, but it's just it, it, it's it's a shame, and I hope he he could, yeah, he could flip it real fast. He might he might not start this game if he has a big game and the Super Bowl. All's forgiven. Yeah, he could also make himself a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. See, um, he has a lot on the line this game. But you you said I think the last game Randy Gregory started the game. Yeah, he started the game for sure. Yeah, but that might have been the package that they started out with, but mm-hmm. still the first play of the game, Randy Gregory. Uh, let's move to the middle of this defense here. Eric Armstead and Javon Hargrave. Dogs. Whoa. Uh, Hargrave has had a pretty rough postseason. Uh-huh. Uh, but, uh, I mean, these guys have been here before. I trust them both. Javon Kinlaw behind him along with uh, Kevin Givens and Sebastian Joseph Day. Um, depth. Uh, just depth. Um, free agency um, here. They've killed it. Uh, trades, they've killed it. And then, of course, their crown jewel on the defensive line, at least, is Nick Bosa. Took a while to get, to get going after that, that little holdout. But yep. Bosa's one He's of those. He's back. If he's on, he's one of those guys that the Miles Garrett, the Teacher Watt, the yeah. Max Crosby, that in that tier of like just different. Yeah, they can, can control the field from uh, defensive end position. It's surprisingly hard to bring down Patrick Mahomes because yeah. of how quick his release is. Yeah, because of how his pocket awareness is next level. And he has sneak. He you can say this by him. He's very sneaky, athletic. He is like he, yeah. it's almost like he's. No, I'm not gonna say it. Uh, but yeah, he's very sneaky, athletic, and uh, it's it's gonna be interesting. The guy like. Nick Bosa, just a hunter of a sack artist. Yeah. Um, if he's going to be able to get him on the ground, like actually sack him or just, you know, going to be able to pressure him, but that doesn't mean much to Patrick Mahomes because that's how Tom Brady was. I mean, yeah, Donovan Smith and um, Juwan Taylor are, are in for, look, you may not count on, you may not have to you know, worry about Chase Young if he gives the effort that he's been giving. But Bosa, the, the, the numbers might not, not, not be the same. But yeah. He, He'll tear you up. The exact opposite. Yeah. The, he gives too much effort sometimes. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, he's he's the crown jewel of his defense for sure. He already commented on the the, the left the tackles that he'll be um, going against as far as what stood out to him, and he said they hold a lot. They do. They hold a lot. The most flagged left tackle in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's facts. He's they've dropping kind of, bars. They've kind of cleaned it up in the, the postseason, but, I mean, yeah, that's an interest. I thought that was a very smart – yeah. Uh, mind game yeah. To, to start. Just they, to put it out there. They hold a lot. Put it out there for the refs. Yep. Put it out there for the players. So just, now everyone's watching. Mm-hmm. Are, are they holding Bosa? I thought that was a, that was a, a very yeah. veteran move. Let's move to the second uh, layer of this defense, the linebackers, which, who are just absolute stallions. Like, just so, so good. Yeah. Dre Greenlaw, Fred Warner, and Oren Burks. Just all so good. Warner like, and Greenlaw are the shades of Patrick Willis and Navarro yes. Bowman. Yes. Like, they've had... These linebackers there for a while, and they've they've drafted there. They they've just turned into two of the best. Warner's the best linebacker. I, it's hard to beat him. I know Roquan Smith is up there, and then Green, uh, Greenlaw is just a dog. He he does he's he's that tone setter on deep. He's right. a hard hitter. Yeah, they and don't he, miss tackles. No, exactly. Yeah, they tackle hard. Yeah, uh, they don't need to come off the field. Yep. Um, going to be very interesting to see these guys matched up with Travis Kelsey, yeah. um, who's fiery and tough in his own right. A lot of trash talking. Um, well, and guys. Yes, a yeah. lot of trash talking, and both just want to physically dominate each yep. other. Yep. Um, these guys are just I, – I, you can't say enough good things about them. I'm almost sick of talking about them yeah. because every round it's just like, oh, yeah, 
The, yeah. I mean, maybe the best linebacker core in the league is also yeah. here. Yep. Um, but yeah, Fred Warner, he, he's also um, someone that they use in the uh, little bit of thrust the passer. Yeah. So maybe we see him in that aspect as well. Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> I want to see. So sometimes you can see Mahomes kind of breaking the pocket and taking off, and he'll just like he do the pump fake thing, like down the field where he obviously can't throw it, yeah. or he'll just throw a little shake in there. Yep. I wonder if that works on Fred Warner or if Fred Warner just plants him. Just flies in the air, just full <laughs> Brian Dawkins just on him. plants him. Yeah. Uh, to the secondary here, which might be the weak point for this for this Niners. Uh, Headlined by Tredavious Ward. Yes, Tredavious Ward and the Amador Lenore, uh, L.A. native. Yep. Um, oh, look, they're, look the just, I think, underrated. Their safeties are, are good. Not great, but they're good. Yeah, they could really use Hufanga. Yeah, this is why they've struggled on the run because mm-hmm. when they reach the third level, it's not great back there. Right. Yeah, yeah, Lenore and Ward are really good cover corners. Yeah. They're not really the physical. Well, Lenore could bring it. Yeah. Uh, but they're not, they're not kind of, I don't know how, how do I say it? They almost don't match this defense. Yeah. You know, as far as yeah. the front seven. Yeah. It's very much physical in the front. It's going to sound bad, but like finesse in the back. Yeah. Like they're but very, that's not very good. Knock. It's just, they're just a different type of. Player as far as a cover as far as coverage corners, they're I don't I'm not saying as good as the Chiefs guys, but they're very very good. They're very good. Yes. Like Ward is kind of, is that kind of cornerback that just gets up for big games. Yeah, and uh, he, I wouldn't be surprised if he gives uh, Rashi Rice a hard tough time. They just lock him up and see if anyone else can beat them. Yeah, their physicality is going to be tested because Rashi Rice is a yak guy. Yeah, so if they can't tackle him in the open field, they're going to have a long long day. Uh, you talk about these safeties, nothing really to write home about. Deshaun Gibson, J.R. Brown. Um, but just probably, um, I mean, they're veterans. They they know where to be. They're yep. trusted, and so and not, definitely not a not a um, a weakness by any means. But that's this team. I, I do wish we could see to uh, to fun to to Hofunga. Yeah, he was a name. he's a dog. He's a menace. He's a linebacker. He's a safety. He's a lot of things yeah. for his defense. It'd be cool to see him in this game. But that's the 49ers. That's our breakdown of them. Uh, let's do picks, and then it's time for the Super Bowl. Okay. All right, you got? all right. All right. Uh, we got this. No intro. Okay. After long consideration, yeah, I've picked this team a long time. I picked this a long time ago. I am done <laughs> picking against Patrick Mahomes. I'm done. Yeah. No more. I'm done. Yeah. It's not happening. I'm going Chiefs by like less by three or less. Very close game, but Chiefs. Okay. I think Mahomes gets get the ball last sec and oh, too late or with too much time. And wins the game. Mahomes. The under is 50 what? It's it's going to go under. Yeah. Low score. I think goal. the last time I checked, too, there um, it's pretty much a 50-50 split now. I think it's minus one. Yeah. So it was minus, minus two and a half. It was two and a half. It's kind of gotten approach. down. Yeah, even. Um, I'm going with the Chiefs as well. I'm not picking against Mahomes. Uh, I'm not picking against Travis Kelsey in the last couple games. He's been on one, too. I Andy Reid. Andy Reid. I think this... They're just they're too good. Yeah. They're too experienced. They're too poised. Um, and I think this defense is gonna give Purdy a hard time. Yeah. You know, I've said some crazy things about that recently, but in all seriousness, I think it's gonna give him a really hard time. I think Purdy is gonna have a rough game. Yeah. Um I think final score, thirteen twenty Chiefs. I have about twenty twenty four to like seventeen or something like so or, or no no, so I'm sorry. I said three. So like twenty to seventeen. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay, those are our picks. Oh my God! Uh, Super Bowl is two days we'll, away. We'll That's see you after the biggest game of the year. We'll God. see you Monday after the biggest game of the year. Officially, season one in the books. Yeah, Bench the Tobar Brothers. Yep. Last last show of Thank the season. Thank you for those who ride row with us. Thank you so much. Looking forward to the off season. It's gonna yeah. be sick. We got some fun things in in store. We're show one hundred. We're announcing some, some yeah. pretty cool shit. Yeah, the show is going to evolve. Yep. Let's just say that this is not. This is this is just stage one. If yes. you've been following us. Get ready for stage two. We're, I am so excited. Super Bowl 58, two days away. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Hope you enjoy that Usher halftime show. Reba yeah. McIntyre, Post Malone. Yeah, and then, of course, the Niners yeah. and the Chiefs. It's going to be a good time. You have a great weekend. Have a great Super Bowl Sunday. We'll see you Monday. Peace. Bye.